We have a very complex storm system coming over the next couple of days, along with two cold fronts, which would lead to significant changes as we head into the weekend. This risk coming up is a bimodal risk. I mean, it's a two prong approach for today. First, our area of concern is further south, where we do have a disturbance starting to build this morning in southwest Texas. That will lead northeast and interact with the dry line later on this afternoon into the evening time frame. We do have an elevated risk, a hatched risk. So anything that does pop within that sector could produce some larger hail, and some of that could be two inches or greater within the Wichita Falls region, back into the Childress region, into West Texas, into Abilene. They did, in fact, downgrade the risk in Oklahoma to a slight risk from the enhanced. So we're going to go over the reasons why. But further north, along the low pressure where the upper level low is, that's where the greatest lift. And you're going to be outside of any capping inversion. So you're going to see a little bit more scattered activities. So you're going to see a little bit more numerous uh, supercells starting to pop within this region of Kansas, back into Nebraska, even leading up into portions of South Dakota. Then there's a little cold, little uh, you know, frontal boundary, which will lead to some marginal and some slight risk storms down here into the Virginia region. Here's take a look at the setup for tornadoes because we do have a little bit of an elevated risk along this boundary. So this is just what the atmosphere is capable of. So anything, this atmosphere is going to be rotating. So anything is going to be breaking the capping inversion could turn supercellular and produce some of those isolated spin up tornadoes is definitely not out of the question in Northwest Texas into Western Oklahoma, back into Kansas, as well as into Nebraska as we head into later on this afternoon, but especially there into the overnight hours, if we look at the latest supercell composite. Again, so this is some of the high resolution guidance that we have to work with. So we'll put the wheels in motion here. Again, this is just what the atmosphere is capable of as we get into the afternoon time frame. So if we continue to move through the morning hours, storms do start to initiate, I think, on the dry line as we get into later on this afternoon. So we do have a little bit of an elevated risk. Some of these storms could pop right around the Wichita Falls region into the Childress region, there into south southern portions of Oklahoma, as well as into portions of Kansas. And as we move through later on into the evening, it gets a little bit more numerous. So the atmosphere is showing, the atmosphere is definitely be capable of, it, if it's able to break the capping inversion, which is a, a warm air aloft, which is also referred to as the EML, the elevated mix layer, that's the protective boundary, about four to 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. So as the storms start to rise, if you have that warm air, that lid aloft, that could suppress and put a lid on the atmosphere and don't allow that supercell potential to form in the Western Oklahoma region. Uh, as we get into the afternoon into the evening time frame because the supercell parameters are fairly elevated along this risk this is the main reason why the storm prediction center has in fact those elevated risk along this boundary especially as you get further north into those areas for closer to the upper level low getting into kansas especially there into nebraska as we head into the evening time frame and this could be an overnight threat, especially further north as we get into the overnight time frame. And as we head into tomorrow morning, starts to die down a little bit. But now the low pressure is really highlighted across uh, Nebraska there. And that will feed into Iowa. And I think things get going, especially as we get into the heating of the afternoon there in southern, southeastern portions of Iowa, back into northern areas of Missouri and into Illinois. I think this is also another greater concern for more supercell thunderstorms that could produce an isolated tornado or two within that sector. And that will move across in peak heating of the afternoon through the Illinois region. And there you can see the elevated risk for the supercell parameters really starting to bubble up across that region. This is about six o'clock on Tuesday afternoon likely going to have a tornado watch in place within this area. And we could be looking at some isolated tornadoes is definitely not out of the question. And some larger hail associated with that batch of supercells moving across Illinois. And I do feel once it gets into 
the nighttime as we head into maybe seven, eight, nine o'clock, it's going to get closer to the Chicago region, even further north into Wisconsin, as this will eventually move into areas of Indiana. So if we take a look at the uh, the overall tornado parameters, you can see what we're working with. So this is your some of the high resolution guidance that we have to work with, some of the short range guidance. And again, we're, we saw the supercells start to form. This again shows the atmosphere is potentially capable of, of anything that does in fact pop and goes above that boundary layer could produce some very high echo tops in the, in the form of the 50, 55,000, maybe even 60,000 feet range eventually. I think further north, you're able to keep, you know be able to get to that. But the tornado parameters are fairly high going in within this sector. So the dynamics that they are there, the parameters are there. There is definitely one limiting factor is the strong capping aversion, especially further south into Texas and much of Oklahoma. You definitely have a less capping inversion as you head into Kansas, into Nebraska and heading into portions of South Dakota and, and, and going into Iowa as well as into Missouri tomorrow. You don't have nearly as the cap and inversion as you were going to be dealing with for those areas into the Oklahoma region. But the tornado parameters are high. It's fairly significant in western Oklahoma. And this is about one o'clock in the morning. So it doesn't imply that it's going to ha actually happen because if the cap is strong enough, that's going to suppress anything. So it's just showing you the atmosphere is definitely be capable of of supercell thunderstorms. That what That's what makes this a very complex situation with storm activity because definitely some areas are going to be limited with that storm development because of that stronger cap. But as further further north you live, I think the greater opportunities, you definitely have a less capping inversion. You're going to have to be uh, more concerned about those supercells forming into, uh, you know, you know, severe thunderstorms and p p potentially rotating uh, supercells because if we take a look as we head into Tuesday afternoon you can see why the storm prediction center does have that elevated risk for tornadoes within this sector down here in southeastern portions of Iowa as well as in the northern uh, Missouri because right where that low pressure center into peak heating so this is a different setup it's not really in the overnight this would be prime time four five six o'clock in the afternoon that's where we could see that tornado watch start to be issued and all these areas definitely had to be on high alert within this sector back into Illinois and the northern Missouri and as well as into Iowa and even further south, they're still elevated, but definitely a lot less. And you're going to be hit with those more capping inversion further south into Arkansas as well as into northeast Texas and getting into as we head into the overnight time frame. That will move towards the, um, the Chicago region in the evening and then eventually head towards uh, Indiana as we head into your, your uh, Wednesday. So if we take a look at the latest update, so this is your composite reflectivity of what we have to work with. So not much happening right now, but you can actually see the little bit of disturbance starting to form in southwest Texas there. That's the disturbance that is going to interact with the uh, with the. Um, the dry line as we head into the afternoon. So this is around you know, one, one, two o'clock in the morning. We are going to be seeing storm initiation, but notice it's not very prevalent, right? It's going to be fighting that cap every step of the way. This is about four o'clock in the afternoon. So we should start to see some likely elevated cells form on top of the boundary layer and could produce some showers and thunderstorms. So anything that does pop within this sector would likely turn severe quickly and it may even be one or two cells folks i mean it's just the atmosphere is definitely capable of but is going to be suppressed because of that strong capping inversion in texas and oklahoma and you can see there's not really much activity as we head into the night time frame frame it's not really until as we head into this is about 10 o'clock right very isolated supercells this one little supercell that likely could turn severe down in West Texas, not much activity in Oklahoma. Again, it's gonna be fighting that cap, right? So as you get closer to that low pressure center, it's gonna have a little bit less capping inversion to work with, and you're not gonna have that protective lid as you get closer into Kansas, as well as into Nebraska. And you can see as we move the needle here, going into the overnight time frame, there's that squall line trying to break the cap, 
but likely might not happen until as you pass Oklahoma City and getting in the Tulsa region, but likely still fairly suppressed further south. And it's definitely not going to be suppressed further north as we head into Nebraska. That's when they would lead into Iowa. And as we head into Tuesday, a lot more greater left. You're going to have a lot more uh, potential. And I think even Tuesday's is likely going to be your greatest day of severe storms with this setup because going into the morning time frame, you can see a lot more numerous supercells starting to form right around that boundary here into Iowa as well as into uh, Minnesota, getting into South, South Dakota there, got to be concerned, and then further isolated as you get head into Missouri. But as we head into peak heating, peak heating, Going into the afternoon, notice the squall line starting to form. That would likely be a damaging wind threat moving through a, a Iowa region, and this will eventually continue actually to amplify and get, get it into that peak heating time frame. This would be the most intense supercells I do feel right around three, four, five, six o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday afternoon. Definitely some tornado watches likely in place by then. And further south, a little bit more scattered to isolated. Further south is Arkansas and far northeast Texas. And this will move through Illinois and eventually heading into uh, the, the Chicago region as we maybe head into 7, 8 o'clock at night on Tuesday night. And that will continue to lift further north into Wisconsin and turn more of a heavy rain threat through uh, the Dakotas and far northern portions of Minnesota. And that will continue to fishtail into uh, Indiana, where we do have a renewed threat on Wednesday with more supercell thunderstorms back into Indiana as well as into Ohio. This will likely lead into areas of Kentucky, getting into western Tennessee by then. So it's a pretty, uh, you know, complex situation. But you can see the dew points of the, the the moisture that we have to work with. So you can see the higher dew points. There's the dry line. Look at that evident dry line as we head into. Uh, this afternoon going into tomorrow and as this uh, this low pressure center will be highlighted over Iowa you can see where the moist sector will be you're never really broken out into southeastern portions of Oklahoma uh, not really cleared out that atmosphere so it stays fairly elevated and this is actually kind of significant as we head into uh, Thursday because we are actually going to be seeing a little cool front come through and there's the boundary of the cool front, and it's right here, the southeastern quadrant of Oklahoma in far north Texas, that we could see a, yet another risk of severe storms highlighted along this boundary ahead of that little cool front that might likely will come through on Thursday night. So areas are concerned are far eastern portions of Oklahoma, far north portions of Texas, getting into Arkansas as we head into Thursday. If we look at the European, you can look, we'll, we'll see the trend on the map here as this comes through. So we'll put this through. So this kind of shows you the, the big picture coming up. So we've got the low pressure center highlighted over Nebraska. We just have some isolated activity, you know, further south fighting that capping inversion every step of the way. But you can see as we move through Heading into Tuesday, this is likely going to be your more significant day as we have a 989 millibar low pressure starting to form, starting to deepen that up there into Nebraska. This will continue to lift northeast towards South Dakota, putting that boundary highlighted over Iowa, over Missouri there, and really amplifying as we get into the afternoon time frame on Tuesday. And that will continue to move through on Wednesday, heading into the upper Midwest, eventually heading towards Ohio, back into Kentucky, into, into Western Tennessee. But notice the boundary there as we head into Wednesday afternoon, especially into Thursday, there's the 540 line. So that's an indication of some cooler air finally coming in from Canada. This is actually going to be a stronger push of colder air. Eventually, it's going to be a two-pronged approach. The first one is actually not significant, but it is going to be running into that warm sector down there into Oklahoma. And you can see that that banding, that convective banding complex that does in fact potentially move through Oklahoma. This could be a damaging wind threat. So we got to be concerned about that as we head into Thursday night across that region with that little cool front. But that moves out. And then we yet we have another push of more significant colder air that will likely arrive 
sometime during the day on going into this is your Saturday as you can see the convective complex start to form right along this boundary in Missouri again back into Oklahoma as well as into Arkansas right in this boundary here that's where the cold front will likely be as we head into Saturday morning and going into the daytime on Saturday a fairly slow moving system this will likely not be severe folks but would likely bring some heavier rains across this boundary and definitely more significant changes as far as cooler conditions arriving you know as we head into Saturday heading into Sunday and you can see we continue to move through that puts some some stronger th storms through Oklahoma and much of Texas there that will eventually head through the areas of the southeast really start to clear the atmosphere out you're going to be seeing some significant changes for late April standards and let's take a look at the temperatures right so we can see where we are now right let's look at the temperatures well above average within the warm sector we're going to be well above average for another couple of days you can see the temperature anomalies 10 15 some actually record high temperatures likely could unfold uh, over the next couple of days maybe not out of the questions a lot of these areas because there's well above average of 15 to 20 degrees above average but you can see the first initial push where the cold front might may lie as we head into thursday uh let's let's move through thursday there's there's actually thursday you can see the push of colder air right so this is the first initial surge we've got the below average anomalies down the, up there in alberta back into saskatchewan those will bleed into the middle part of the of the, of the u.s with some cooler temperatures uh fighting that warm sector further south that's going to provide that lift mechanism and provide the showers and thunderstorms as we head into Thursday night further south into, into Oklahoma and portions of Texas and Arkansas. You can see the push, push of cooler air coming through the middle part of the country and you get a reinforcing shot as we head into the weekend. So you can really see it going into Friday to areas in Montana really start to drop across the middle of the country through Nebraska. Those areas even further south will eventually start getting the cold front with those with those elevated uh, showers and thunderstorms, likely not severe further south, right? So, but you are gonna be experiencing the cooler anomalies for a good part of the country, especially the central and eastern two thirds of the country as we head into Saturday. And it really starts to go into Sunday. This is Sunday the 21st, folks. This is a rare cold front actually reaching all the way down to the coast. Yes, you guys in Louisiana are gonna feel it, Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, you all are going to feel this front, even in the Carolinas, folks. No one's actually going to get left out on this front besides maybe portions of Florida and actually areas west. But other than that, that goes into the 22nd and actually keeps those cooler anomalies. But yes, it's going to be middle to late April. So obviously that cold front's you know not going to last and you're quickly <laughs> going to warm up on the backside as we head into say that 24th of april time frame so guys i appreciate you guys watching i know it's a lot to cover in this update so make sure you're subscribed make sure you turn the notifications on and definitely catch my next update why i protect you before and after storm